All right, folks, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, again, uh, for those that want to ask uh, Coach Campy or student athlete Jalen Moore a question, simply raise your hand. See a couple doing that already. So we'll get to Ryan and Tony. But, uh, Coach, let's start with an opening statement from you. Just your thoughts about getting to this point and then the way things unfold this evening. Well, I mean, losing sucks. I mean, it's just what it is. It, it does. And, and um, uh, unfortunately for every good team, you, that's going to happen. Your season's going to end except for one team. And so, you know, ours ended a little bit sooner than we would have liked it. Uh, but I, I, my hats are off to Cleveland State. They just, they just played better than we did. They just, they played at a championship level tonight. And uh, I give them all the credit in the world for that. They, they were tougher than we were. Um, you know, the, 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 from the 15 minute mark to the end of the first half was really what destroyed us. And we didn't handle that 15 minutes very well, not from a defensive standpoint and not from a, a mental standpoint. We, we really kind of panicked. And I'll take the blame for that. I, 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 you know, we, we just panicked and, and that, that falls back on my shoulders. I thought the second half we battled our tails off and we did everything we could, but it was just too big of a deficit to overcome on a night. We couldn't make a shot. Ryan K go right ahead with your question for coach or for Jalen. This question is for coach Campy. Um, in the second half, you outscored Cleveland state by one point and, with Williams and Moore not being seniors and coming back, along with your two freshmen and Daniel, um, do you believe in the off season that you could put forth a team that can not only just be the favorites for the horizon next year, but also compete nationally with some other major teams? You know, I haven't thought that far ahead of it. I mean, I do think that we've thought that leading up to this. I think we think that we have a chance to be really special. I think we have to add a piece. Uh, we've had we've we've got three really good recruits, four really good recruits that we've signed um, that we think will really help us. Uh, I think the one thing that we really need to add to be at a national level is a rim protector in, at the back of that zone and get tray out on a wing where he really belongs. And so if we can do that, that would help. If not, I do think we have a chance to be as competitive as anybody in this conference. But I think anytime you lose, you know, you, you console yourself by thinking those things. I think Detroit thinks that. I think Wright State thinks that. I think Northern Kentucky lost last night. I think they think that. I think Milwaukee thinks that. I think every team in this league feels that they can win it next year right now uh, with adding the right piece. So are we in that group? Sure, we're in that group. I really like, I love this team, man. I, I, I've said that all year, what we've gone through, what we've persevered, um, how we've battled, how we've grown as a group. Um, but tonight, for about 10 minutes there in the first half, we regressed, and, and that was disappointing. Ryan, do you got a follow-up? Coach, um, the only follow-up question I do have, and you're right, it's after a tough game today, it's you may be not want to think about the off season, uh, but how proud of you of Jalen Moore, um, who had 22 points tonight, who led your team as the point guard for all season, being first team all conference. How proud of you of him moving forward, and how excited are you looking forward to working with him in the off season? Well, we get to work this off season. You know, that, that's the thing that, that I'm excited about is that we didn't have an off season. We did, you know, Jalen showed up and we couldn't do it. We couldn't do anything. You know, we, we were locked out of the gym. We couldn't get shots up. We couldn't do anything. So the development this year was more, you know, in-game training. And now we get a chance to, you know, Jalen, as, as I've said many times, is a very, very intelligent uh, player who, loves the game and is a student of the game. And now we're going to get to have a year of film to look at a year that doesn't count in his, in his growth. Um, he's a, he's a tremendous student when a film, he, he's knows, you know, he's just smart enough that when I say something, he knows what I'm talking about. We battle each other because uh, all great players want to do it their way. And, and, you know, I think I know how to make him even greater. So, I think he accepts that and, and we'll continue to have that type of relationship and, and go stronger. And 
Uh, the big thing that I like about Jalen, he wants to win and he wants to win to a fault. And so I believe, yeah, great things are going to happen. And it's, I'm proud is a great word, but you know, we've got a lot to accomplish together in the next couple of years. I'm really looking forward to, to working with him to do that. Ryan, thank you very much. Tony, go ahead and unmute yourself. Tony, Paul, uh, you've got the floor. Go ahead with the first question. Greg, was this kind of a, just kind of a full reversal of what you saw yesterday as far as them going inside and you guys going outside? Yeah, I, I, and I don't know how that all happened. Uh, you know, we, we got out, we made a couple shots early, and then we, we came down and panicked. You know, we, we, we were ahead maybe 10 to 5 or something like that. We came down two possessions and just fired threes. And the next thing you knew, we were behind, and, and it just got away from us. I mean, the, the game plan was to go to Dan and – you know, they were, they sagged everybody down. They were daring Micah to shoot. They were daring Trey to shoot. And, and uh, as things started to get away from us, we, we just didn't handle it well. And, and again, I, as I said at the beginning, I'll take the blame for that. There's a lot of plays I could have called that I didn't, that might've changed how we went about our offense, but we really, you know, we just were hoping Jalen would make some plays and Dan would, you know, and we really got away from what we do. Tony, you have a follow-up? I have one really quick one for Greg and then one for Jalen, but with Daniel, um, did, I mean, was that just, you know, his night, was that just, you know, the result of what they did with Northern Kentucky did, or was it just an off night? Um, Cleveland State. Not I mean, what, what Cleveland yeah. State you're talking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I think Cleveland State was very physical, but Dan played some good games against them during the season. I just think it was a bad, you know, he had a tough night. You no, know, he just had a tough night. I mean, it, it happens. And, and he, you know, he pushed himself. He tried to get through it. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think he got to the free throw line, which is unbelievable. And, and, you know, for him, he only got fouled one time, didn't shoot any free throws. He was two for seven from the floor. And I think he might have been that at halftime. And, uh, you know, we ended up taking 38 threes out of 61 shots. And, and that's, that's just bad coaching. You know, and that's just, it's just bad coaching. Jalen, um, I guess, how do you put this season in perspective for you? Um, I mean, what successful, um, I mean, obviously you fall one, one short, so, you know, you're not happy right now, but overall, if you can kind of assess the season for you and, and, and coming to Oakland and, and getting to this point. Um, honestly, um, I don't think it was good enough. Um, there's some things that I can do better. I know I can be better at, and um, I'm going to work on them in the off season. So, um, I mean, anybody could say I had a good year, but in my eyes, it wasn't good enough. Tony, thank you. Let's get to Matt Dudek. Go with your question for uh, for Coach Camp here for Jalen Moore. Hey, Greg. Um, did Cleveland State throw anything different at you, especially uh, down low? You know, that's really where they seemed to, to pull this game out on you guys was down low. Did you see anything different in this game that you weren't expecting, or did they just – I'll play you, and you, it was just kind of the way the night went. They played some zone, and uh, I don't think we attacked that very well. Um, again, I blame myself for that. I, I, I just – we stood a lot, and we watched – you know, we watched Jalen dribble around a little bit, and then, you know, Zion went into the game, and we missed shots, and we just played in a panic. And um, so their zone – I was a little surprised they zoned us. They hadn't in the other games, but it was. I mean, we've seen enough zone that we've actually played pretty well this year against zone. So I, I, if you asked me before the game and said they're going to zone you, I'd say good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, but they got away with it, and, and we allowed it by, you know, again, I, we just fell in love with the three. We fell in love with trying to catch up with the home run instead of just playing our, our game. And, feel bad about that. I feel bad that I allowed it to happen. Matt, you got one more? I do. Uh, Jalen, as one of the leaders of this team, um, Oakland's been known to have some transfer stuff going on in the past. Obviously, this this whole offseason, there's a lot of transfers expected. What do you do as a leader of this team to try to keep the pieces together and keep everybody local so that you guys can actually build and uh, come back strong next year? Um, I think, you know, the season we had speaks for itself. Uh, we're a young group of guys who went to the championship game. Uh, nobody's played with each other except for a couple of people. And, um, you know, 
we didn't have that much practice with each other. So, um, you know, we got we had to get used to each other in the games early on. So, I mean, you know, my job is, you know, just try to keep everybody comfortable and um, help everybody out to the best of my ability. We're going to go next to uh, WTHI's Rick Semler. Rick, uh, go ahead. Your question for Coach Campy or for Jalen Moore. Hey, Jalen, how you doing? Um, I know you're you're so big on uh, wanting to prove yourself. You were doubted in high school, doubted going to JUCO, and uh, you had several people overlook you when you went D1. Lead the nation in assists, the monster scoring season. How satisfying was it to prove not only could you play Division One this year, but you could excel at the Division One level this year? Um, it feels good, but I honestly don't look at that stuff like that because I know what I'm capable of. You know, there's a lot of outside people who hasn't played the game ever in their life that has their opinion on me. Um, they don't know the work that I put in, so um, it feels good, but I try not to look at that stuff as much. Rick, you got a follow-up? Yeah, one more question. I remember talking to you last year. You know, you had, you had a couple of years at Oakland, and you one of the things you want to do so bad was get to that NCAA tournament, and you come up one game short – I know it just happened, but just how bad is this going to drive you in the offseason to one more opportunity to, you want to get to the NCAA tournament? Um, yeah, it really hurt today. Um, just seeing them celebrate and, you know, hearing how happy they were and stuff like that. You know, I watched it and it really hurt. Um, you know, it's was, it was a big goal of mine to get to the NCAA tournament and it would have meant so much to me to get to it um, here at home. Um, but you know, it just wasn't meant to be. So um, we got to move forward and continue to be better. And there's always the next year. Rick, thank you very much. I've got one question posted me in chat that I will ask. We'll let you guys go. This is from uh, John Title, uh, Coach Campy for you. You, you. you played your typical brutal non-conference schedule. So clearly you played some other NCAA caliber, you know, NCAA tournament caliber teams. How does Cleveland State compare to like the Xavier's Michigan States that you've already played so far this year? Well, I mean, from a pure talent standpoint, I don't think they're in a, you know, we played a lot of top 10 teams and I don't think, you know, there's no Isaiah Livers or Hunter Dickerson out there on their team. But what they have is they have a co co cohesive group that play their tails off, that are opportunistic. They get all the loose balls, they're physical and they believe in themselves. They've got enough guys that can make shots that, you know, they've got a chance. I feel real comfortable saying that they've got a chance to do something in the tournament. Um, you know, it all comes down to the draw. I mean, I, the greatest team I ever had, I thought could go to a sweet 16 or a final four. And Texas is the number one team in the country, the second to last week of the season. And then they lose in the big 12 champion or first round of the big 12. And they fall all the way to a four seed. They've got three first round draft picks on their team. We lose by two or four to them in the first round of the tournament. You know, I mean, that was just so heartbreaking to see that team have to play a team that I thought was a one or two seed. And so you never know how that's going to shake out. And um, you know, the matchup that they get, you know, they're, they're capable. They're capable of, of doing some special things. They're, they're well coached. They play their hearts out and, and they've got physicality. And in this game, if you have physicality, there's nights you can beat anybody. Guys, not many teams start 0-9 and, and, and play for a conference championship. Congratulations on a great turnaround of your season, Coach Campy. Jalen, I had the pleasure of covering some of your games in high school. Very happy for you. You made it to this point uh, at the Division One level. Guys, thank you for your time and, and, and uh, enjoy the offseason. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, folks. Again, we will have uh, Coach Gates from Cleveland State, as well as Tori Patton, the tournament MVP. After the celebration period is over on the floor, please stay with us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the Horizon League champions. For the first time since 2009, it's the Vikings of <laughs> Cleveland State University. That's going to make you smile for a long time, Coach. Dennis Gates is joining us. Tournament MVP Tori Patton is joining us. We'll start taking questions in a moment. Uh, but, uh, Coach, just an opening statement. How are you feeling right now? Well, this is outstanding. Um, you know, I, I wanted to step back and see how the guys was going to react to it. I told them this was a sweet opportunity that we've put ourselves in. And there's nothing more like cutting down a net and holding up a trophy. Uh, our guys, man, first of all, credit to Oakland. 
Uh, I have so much respect for Coach Campy and what he's done with his program over the years. He's one of the most senior guys in the country. Uh, but he, he is a great coach, a great coach. And one of the first phone calls I made when I got the job was to talk to him and give him his respects because of what he's done uh, throughout this conference. So, uh, you know, being able to, to finish this game the way that we want it, the way that we plan is, is great. Uh, I want to give thanks to our campus administration, President Harlan Sands, Scott Garrett, and obviously the Horizon League for getting us to this point. We played over 90% of our conference games. We were able to mature, uh, maturate as a team, as a program, and ultimately get to this point of a conference championship. Uh, to our parents, to our family, friends, and loved ones, thank you guys for your support. Uh, this is a wonderful feeling, man. Wonderful feeling. Robert Fenbers, you're up first. Again, I'll, I'll let you ask a question. I will come back to give you time for a follow-up, and then I'll move on to the next reporter. Robert, the floor is yours. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Coach Gates, on the uh, uh, Horizon League Championship and clinching the birth of the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, this team has gone through so much adversity just in this tournament alone. You know, for you guys to take that 10-point lead before half, it really seemed like that was kind of that turning point. And you can just see the excitement in their eyes. What did you say during that time out when you guys had that lead and you guys were getting ready to go in the half? Well, I'll tell you what, it's not what I said, it's what the team said. They said, let's keep doing the uh, fundamental things that we've been doing, um, not settling for outside shots, getting into the paint. And, you know, our, 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 our team's leadership stood out during that moment. Um, our guys d defended. They defended from the very beginning of the game to the end. Uh, they played together to have 20 assists and seven turnovers. That's tremendous basketball, and we shot 51% from the field. Um, to win a game like that, you know, it, it just speaks to our guys standing in the moment. It speaks to the adversity that they had to overcome maybe in their lives that applies to the same things that a basketball game uh, could, 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 could present and they just fought through it, man. And I'm proud of them. Tory Patton, this guy sitting right here. Uh, unbelievable. He did a great job and it's about them student athletes. Robert, your follow-up. Yeah. You know, just following up with that, you know, you've talked so much about the core values of this program. How did you see those core values come into play throughout just this three game stretch here in the horizon league? Well, the friendship and love um, part of it, our guys love each other. They play for each other. They play with each other and they leave whatever they have on the court. Uh, they're literally connected as any connected group I've been a part. Uh, so that's the friendship and love. They hold each other accountable. So accountability is the next one. Um, you know, and they, and, they and they trust. They trust each other. You know, um, you look at discipline, unselfishness, enthusiasm and toughness. That was displayed in everything that we've done and sacrificed from the social lives to, 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 to get to this point. Our guys put a lot behind for the team and they did it for this moment. This is one of the moments that they did it for. And to see it come to fruition is very important to young people as they grow. It's important to young people as they matriculate and, and, and maturate in life. There's nothing that comes without a sacrifice, and they sacrificed all they did and all they had to do to get to this moment. Elton Alexander, please go ahead. Let's try that again. Elton, go ahead with your question. Floor's yours. I'm, I'm sorry. Coach, your, your physicality was really, really big in this game. Uh, I know it can travel to the NCAA tournament, but will it be enough uh, to carry it to the kind of uh, victories you want to get uh, going forward with your overall lack of height? Well, as it relates to our next opponent, the most important opponent is ourselves. That's what we spoke about all season. And we never look too far ahead nor too far behind. We just continue to focus on getting better and learning from our mistakes and those lessons. I think when you look at the NCAA tournament, we don't know who we play. We're looking forward to standing in this moment, looking forward to Selection Sunday to see who we match up against. Uh, there's no longer us saying we don't know what city we go to, but we're going to be here in Indianapolis. And we're excited about that. And what I do know, our guys will play 
together. They'll play as best as they can and leave it all out on the court. Everything else will be taken care of. Elton, you got a follow up? Uh, yeah, if I got, if I could throw one to, to uh, Tori, please. Uh, talk about your game tonight, and particularly the fact that again the physicality from you guys really wore them down. Uh, I feel like I played uh well tonight. I just try not to stress myself out. Uh, following, I mean, before the game, you know, I I try to just come out there and play my game and uh get my teammates involved. I feel like all season that's how we played. Though we've been, a, we try to be the more physical team. We try to be the scrappy team. Uh, you know, they try to they call us the bad news bears. So we try to we try to play like that, play as hard as we can every night. Bob McDonald, Horizon Roundtable. You're up next. Go ahead, Coach Gates. Th congratulations on the win. Congratulations on the championship. Um, over the course of the season, I know you mentioned at least a couple of times that this team um, has yet to play. Um, a full 40 minutes of basketball. Was this game that full 40 minutes? And if not, how close are you guys to getting there? We're close. We're still not there yet. Um, you know, as I evaluate, I got to watch the tape to really get an accurate answer on that. But I thought our guys gave what we could give. And once I say, look at the game, I got to match the game with our scouting report to see if we actually executed and played that full 40 minutes. But take, take no doubt about what I'm saying. Our guys played tremendous, and I am proud of them. To accomplish this uh, at this moment in their lives is something that no one can take away from them. They earned it. And obviously, it's, it's, it's for Cleveland State University. I'm so proud of these dudes. I'm proud of my staff. Uh, Rob Summers, Drew Joyce III, Ryan Sharball, Chase Goldstein, Rosby Mutcherson, um, Dickie Nutt, those guys, man, being able to prepare for this moment is the most important part. Our job as, as leaders is to put a mirror up so these young people see the ver best version of themselves. And I think we allowed them tonight to see the best version of themselves uh, by holding up a mirror and them looking at that reflection. Bob, you got a follow up? Uh, Coach, I would be remiss if I did not talk about. It. Obviously, it was a team win tonight. Obviously, I would not be. I would be remiss if I didn't ask a question about the bench. Um, it, early on, I, that for, that second game, get, that first game against Purdue Fort Wayne, it seemed like there was so much energy coming off of them. It almost it, it almost helped you guys will your way into that victory in triple overtime. This time, this game right here, I swear. They caused at least uh, their their energy caused at least one turnover during that game. How important is it that those guys are are you know just as much of a part of this game as the guys on the court? They're part of everything that we do. I don't treat anyone any different. Uh, you can tell that's a question for Tori that I think it would be best if he answer. Uh, Tori, uh, uh, the bench they give us a lot of energy. Uh, they just pump us with confidence the whole game. Just a especially with us not having fans and us having to feed off each other, just having that energy come from the bench just gives us a big boost of confidence and makes us play a lot harder. John Parker, you're up next. Go ahead and hit the unmute button. The floor is yours. Go ahead, John. Coach Gates, obviously there's a lot of basketball to be played both in the one bid leagues and the power conferences, but I'm looking at some of the seed projections right now and I'm seeing potential matchups for you guys against teams like Arkansas and Jalen Tate, um, you know, annual powerhouses like Kansas and Villanova, and then a little bit further down the seed line, uh, Florida State. Is there anyone you'd like to see pop up on Selection Sunday? Uh, just our guys' smiles when they put that camera on their faces. <laughs> I think that's the most important uh, opponent that we have uh, is ourselves. My staff will do a, they'll do their job in, in preparing us. They've done so all year. The Horizon League is a great league full of unbelievable coaches. You got Mike Davis, who's coached that in the final four, uh, Coach Nagy, who's won multiple championships. You got Jerry Calhoun um, and, and Coach Campy. You, you have a lot of great coaches from great pedigree. Pat Baldwin had his team ready to play. John Kaufman is is number two in the country in uh, offensive efficiency behind Baylor up uh, behind Baylor and above Gonzaga. Our conference is a great conference and to get 90 plus percent of our games in has allowed us to mature. It has allowed us to get better and face different styles of play, different defenses. So my credit is to the Horizon League for for their diligence this summer 
scheduling the way that we scheduled to get these games in the way that we did and obviously get to this point. You know, the utmost respect to whoever we play, but this is a moment for our guys. I want to enjoy this moment for our guys and Selection Sunday is Selection Sunday. Everything else is a guess, so I can't guess on who we're going to play. John, you got a follow-up? Good, thank you. John, thank you very much. All right, let me get to uh, Mike Lepresti. Mike Lepresti. Mike, go ahead and unmute yourself, and uh, the floor is yours, Mike. Have at it. Uh, Coach, congratulations. Mike Lepresti, NCAA.com. Does Athens, Ohio seem like a lifetime ago? And when a team endures that and comes back the way these guys did from a start of the season like that and the journey ends here, what did that start put into this team that carried you this far? Well, we had three games against Toledo, against uh, Ohio, and against Ohio State. Three great programs from the state of Ohio, three great coaches, some great players in those programs. All those games have allowed us to get prepared for our conference year, conference season. We're not the same team we were against Toledo that we are now. We're not the same team that we were at Ohio that we were now. We had six newcomers, six guys returning who played only a half a year. Craig Bowen played 20 games uh, his first year. So we got a relatively young team who, and Al Javon Eichelberger wasn't playing that game. So most importantly is how we've matured through the 20 games in our conference. That's the most important part in preparing us for right now. And our players, Torrey Patton, man, I don't know what, what else I can say about Torrey Patton. You know, for us, he's the conference player of the year. For us, that's how we feel about him. And he just had a burning burning feeling in his, in his belly that he was left off an of all-conference team last season, but he'll never admit how mad he was. But I know when his eyebrows start moving, he upset. <laughs> Mike, you got a follow-up? No, I'm good. Thanks. All right, I'm going to ask a couple of questions that were posted in the chat. This is for Coach Gates from Alec. What does it mean to you to bring a conference title back to Cleveland? in just your second year on the job? Well, I don't, you know, first of all, I'm, I, I am very thankful for uh, Scott Garrett and President Sands giving me this opportunity to lead a program. They saw enough in me. Um, and and that's, that speaks volumes for who they are as leaders uh, on our campus. So this is an opportunity for them to celebrate. This is an opportunity for our past players of the program, Norris Cole, all those guys to, this is a moment for them. They put time and effort into the building that we are following in their footsteps. You know, this is for John McClendon. This is for uh, Kevin Mackey. You know what I mean? This, this, this is for those guys along the way, okay? Um, I've had conversations with uh, several former coaches, Gary Waters included, those guys have been very supportive. Kevin Mackey have been very supportive along the way. This is for them as well. Hopefully we're making them proud. This is for the guy, for, for our students. This is for our current students, our future students, our past alumni. This is for Viking Nation. This is for the city of Cleveland. You know, we're in the footprint with the Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Indians and Cleveland Cavaliers. Hopefully we can get in the same conversation. One thing I do know about the city of Cleveland is that we have some traditional rich sports fans that's enjoying this moment as well. So this is for them. This is, this is for our guys in there. And when they think down the line 20 years from now, this is a Hall of Fame team. This is a Hall of Fame team for Cleveland State University and Tory Patton is a big part of it. Well, Tory, last questions for you. This is from John. He said, simply said, you were named conference tournament MVP. How were you able to play your best when it mattered the most? Uh, I really tried not to put too much thought in it. I just wanted to go out there and just play my game. But, I mean, that word just goes to my teammates and, you know, the resiliency we showed with, you know, players just stepping up. You know, last game, you know, Jason stepped up in a big way, Al knocking down a big shot. It just seemed like somebody new stepped up every game when we need him. And that just showed, like, the depth of our team and uh, – the talent we have on the bench and you guys just always being ready to go. So I feel like I'm just truly proud of them. Dennis, my guess is if this, if this stat wasn't made known to you beforehand, if you didn't have it, you're going to hear about it a lot the next couple of weeks. The Vikings have never lost a first round game in the NCAA tournament. Best of luck to you and your team in keeping that going. Congratulations on a championship well-deserved. Coach Gates and Tory Patton, 
Guys, thank you and best of luck. Look forward to seeing you back in Indianapolis next week. Thank you and go Vikes. Appreciate it.